Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a relatively new proposition that tries to abandon the idea known as dark energy and instead focuses on something entirely different, explaining the observational evidence we see from around the universe as a result of a very bizarre time dilation effect as opposed to an actual particle or some kind of a quirk in the formula. Or just to rephrase this, we have this new study that actually provides evidence that maybe dark energy actually doesn't exist and what we've been observing for the past 25 years is essentially a kind of a illusion. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics. The dark energy. A type of an energy believed to exist in the universe that seems to affect everything in the universe, especially on the largest scales, and seems to drive the accelerating expansion of the universe, while also contributing nearly 70% of total energy to everything inside the universe as well. And although we obviously have no idea what's causing the expansion, and more importantly, what's causing the accelerated expansion, all of this was essentially discovered and sort of confirmed back in 1998 through what's known as the Supernova Cosmology Project. And that's because during this project, the scientists observed various supernova at various distances, basically discovering that the ones farther away were actually moving away from us much, much faster than expected. Essentially suggesting that something was accelerating the expansion of the really far away objects, because otherwise their velocities away from us would not make sense. And in the last decade, a lot of different surveys and a lot of different observations using various methods, to some extent confirmed a lot of this, especially by not just observing supernova, but by also observing various galaxies. One of the biggest projects right now is known as DESI, and its whole purpose is to actually study dark energy. And that's because DESI stands for Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument. And so in the last 25 years, this idea of dark energy really took off. But even the initial discoveries discovered something really bizarre. First of all, the so-called Hubble tension. By comparing the results from the cosmic microwave background with the results from the nearby universe, a lot of studies confirmed that the acceleration of the universe seems to have changed. As in it was not constant, as of the amount of dark energy changed over time. On top of this, in the most recent release from DESI, researchers discovered something really surprising. The main cosmological model did not actually fit the results, basically suggesting once again that dark energy was changing in time, or maybe the cosmological constant was not a constant at all. In other words, something here was just not adding up, with more and more studies discovering the same. And so the main cosmological model known as Lambda CDM was potentially not accurate. Ok, things are going to get a little bit more complicated now, so let's visualize some of this just to make it more clear. So basically in cosmology, this is the most common example when trying to explain the expansion of the universe. We have a loaf of raisin bread that's basically expanding in the oven. And over time the distance between various raisins starts to slowly increase as the bread grows larger and larger. Now in the main model, the Lambda CDM, this expansion is basically uniform but also accelerates over time. We have a perfectly smooth bread and everything expands at the same rate everywhere. But for approximately 15 years, there's also been additional models that sort of think that maybe this is incorrect. Many of these models are known as the inhomogeneous cosmology, because here the models don't assume that everything around the universe is equal, and essentially assume that something in the universe is either clumpy or not exactly the same. For example, one of the potential explanations is maybe that the universe is not flat, as we currently believe, but it might be either curled or curved in such a way that it basically looks like it's accelerating, but in reality it's just the shape of the universe that's different. Now this model we've discussed previously, and right now the evidence suggests that it's maybe not correct, there should be a video in the description talking about this, but in 2007 David Wiltshire, a theoretical physicist from New Zealand, proposed something slightly different. He basically named his model Timescape Cosmology. Honestly, a pretty cool name. And so in his model, he basically suggests that the universe is not as smooth and as homogeneous as we believe, or basically the bread is not really smooth and not flat, but is instead super super clumpy. It has certain regions that are way more clumpy than other regions, and other regions that are very empty and potentially expand really fast. But the reason his model is called timescape cosmology is actually because he believes that in certain regions in the universe, the time basically runs at different speed. Or in other words, time tends to run slowly, in locations with a lot of density and basically a lot of dark matter, 
with the opposite happening in locations like the voids, where the time is much quicker. Which is of course based on the ideas proposed by Einstein known as time dilation. And so in other words, if you're located in some kind of a really really dense galactic cluster, with a lot of dark matter and a lot of galaxies, the time for you is going to be moving much slower than for someone else in some kind of a galactic void where there's basically nothing, and thus the time dilation is going to be non-existent. And so this timescape model explains that time is slower in various regions with stronger gravitational fields, such as for example galaxies, especially massive galaxies, compared to locations we refer to as cosmic voids. Here's actually that famous map that we have of various cosmic voids around us. And because cosmic voids generally represent a much bigger volume compared to galactic clusters, this can cause an illusion where things basically move at different time and result in observations that kind of look like something is accelerating the expansion. And so for example for galaxies like the Milky Way, the model predicts that time here would be up to 35% slower compared to a large cosmic void such as the Bootis void, implying that millions and millions of years would have passed inside these voids compared to galactic clusters. But in more scientific terms, this is referred to as back reaction of inhomogeneities in matter distribution. This is in case you want to google this or something. In more layman terms, it replaces the idea of dark energy with what's known as kinetic gravitational energy, with the clumpiness and the gradient basically creating an illusion of an accelerated universe. And for this timescape model, instead of matter density, the main parameter is known as void fraction, or basically the amount of voids present in the universe compared to galactic clusters. And so if once again we go to this model, here in the timescape model, this unusual bread loaf is far from perfect and far from smooth, and instead contains huge chunks, but also contains very big holes, actually empty holes, very similar to what you would usually find inside some kind of a sourdough bread. And because this is internet, someone actually did take a picture of sourdough bread with raisins. But for many years this was always an extremely hypothetical idea. An idea that not a lot of scientists accepted, because nobody expected that in these dense areas the gravity would be so much stronger that it would actually cause the time to flow so much slower, thus making the expansion slower as well. And that's of course until this somewhat recent study. This study once again used supernova to try to find out if there's any merit or any evidence to this proposition and if it's actually something worth pursuing. And so here we have a study by Antonia Seifer and a team from New Zealand and Germany, although in this case also including the original author David Wiltshire. And so yeah, I guess you could call it a bit of a bias. But still an exciting study because in this case, by once again using type 1a supernova, which we usually use to measure distances, and specifically using the data from the Pantheon Plus Type 1a supernova dataset, here by using 1500 distinct supernova, the researchers behind the study potentially discovered that there might be evidence for this timescape cosmology after all. Or to be more specific, a lot of nearby supernova, at a distance of less than 320 million light years away from us, or essentially nearby supernova, seem to fit the data for the timescape cosmology much much better than Lambda CDM model. But at farther away distances, and especially really far distances, due to the lack of data, this preference disappears. But because this is the first official confirmation for this theoretical framework, this obviously requires additional studies. Studies from the proponents of Lambda CDM model, who can thoroughly go through the data, discovering if maybe there's something that doesn't add up, or possibly confirming the results, suggesting that the timescape model might be correct after all. And if so, this would suggest that the idea that gravity slows time, and the idea that dense areas create the acceleration we observe, would definitively suggest that dark energy is just an illusion. An illusion caused by the effects of gravity on time due to gravitational time dilation. Or basically in these voids, the expansion just happens much faster, because the time there flows faster as well. And since eventually these voids are going to be dominating the entire universe, the expansion in this case will appear to accelerate over time. But at the same time this model also suggests that over time the expansion is actually slowing down. And so at some point the universe might start contracting, assuming the model is correct. But in order to test all of this, and in order to actually find out if any of this is correct, we actually need even more observations and even more supernova, which we're actually going to have really soon, once the Euclid mission completes its first data set. Here it's going to observe several thousand supernova, with the data from this telescope allowing us to study all of this 
with a lot more precision. And so in the next few years, the Timescape cosmology is very likely going to be thoroughly tested. But because this study provides an extremely strong statistical evidence so far, this is definitely not something that's going to be ignored. I'm pretty sure there are going to be follow-up papers in the next few months, and so we'll come back and talk about this really soon. But until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar ideas in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.